Northrop Grumman Configuration Analyst is denied long-term disability benefits despite the fact that Unum failed to consider a favorable Social Security decision or even get the Social Security disability file. The first thing I want to know when I look at a denied long-term disability case is what's the standard of review that the court has to use to review a claims denial. The answer to that question can make all of the difference in a case. In fact, it can make or break a case. If there is a de novo standard of review, the court gets to substitute their own judgment. But in a um, arbitrary and capricious standard of review, you have to establish that the decision of the claims administrator or the policy was arbitrary and capricious. So what does arbitrary and capricious mean? Well, this is not a standard that, this, that lawyers learn in law school. In fact, when I tell lawyers uh, that the standard of review is arbitrary and capricious, they ask me, what is that? Well, if the policy says that the carrier or the plan has the right to decide the policyholder or plan beneficiary's entitlement to benefits or interpret the terms of the policy, the standard of review is generally arbitrary and capricious. That means that there must be no reasonable basis for the claims denial. The arbitrary and capricious standard of review can make all of the difference, particularly in the story I'm about to tell you right now. It's Irving versus Unum Life. And this was a, a district court, a federal district court in Maryland case. Now Unum told Irving that it would give significant weight to the Social Security decision, finding that he was disabled. But guess what? Unum didn't. Irving was employed by Northrop Grumman as a configuration analyst. She was paid her own occupation disability benefits by UNUM and under the terms of the policy was required to apply for Social Security disability benefits. Why? Because they get an offset. They get to reduce your benefits. She used Genix, who was recommended by UNUM, and she was awarded her Social Security disability benefits. And UNUM said, look, we're going to apply significant weight to this decision in determining her entitlement to continued uh, any occupation disability benefits. Well, guess what? Unum denied her claim and basically disregarded and discounted the Social Security Administration's finding that she was entitled to Social Security disability benefits. Unum broke their promise and, to add insult to injury, Unum demanded repayment of the overpayment of her long-term disability benefits as a period of time in which she had uh, been awarded her Social Security disability benefits. Now, the own occupation definition of disability in the Unum policy required that she submit proof to UNUM that she had continued under the regular care of a physician for her disabling medical condition, that she was unable to perform the duties of any gainful occupation for which she was uh, reasonably fitted by her education, her training, or experience, and that she could be expected uh, to earn at least 60% of her prior earnings within 12 months of assuming that position. That's a lot to prove, and it's hard to prove. Now, as of the date of the change of the definition of disability in her case, Irving uh, was being treated for pulmonary and hip problems. Her phys treating physicians opined that she could only do sedentary work, just like I'm doing here. I'm just sitting down. Now, this was confirmed by Unum's peer review providers, and guess what they did next? Unum identified other occupations that she could allegedly perform. I call it mythically, hypothetically, not real world perform. As a result, and notwithstanding the favorable Social Security decision, Irving's claim for continued long-term disability benefits was denied. So Irving submitted an appeal. And as part of that, she underwent an independent medical evaluation and a functional capacity evaluation. She insisted also that UNUM give significant weight to the Social Security decision it promised it would. But, of course, UNUM upheld the denial. Now, applying the arbitrary and capricious standard of review, the court found that UNUM had considered all of the relevant material, despite the fact that it didn't even get Irving's Social Security disability file from Gen X, who they recommended, or from the Social Security Administration. I think that's absolutely wrong. The arbitrary and capricious standard of review allows disability carriers like Unum to get away with robbery. The lesson I think that needs to be learned is that the policyholder's attorney should obtain a copy of the Social Security file and submit it as part of any appeal. Normally I represent 
my clients in their social security disability case because I don't want them to be using a company like Gen X who will develop the wrong medical conditions. I want to handle that case from beginning to end because if the claim is denied, I'm submitting as part of the appeal all of the evidence that was submitted in the social security disability case. That's going to be forms that uh, my client has completed, forms completed by third parties like relatives, all the medical records I uh, submitted. If I got a vocational report or an FCE, that's included. And of course, what's included uh, is going to be the Social Security decision. And sometimes e I will even submit the applicable law that supports the um, uh, administrative law judge's finding of disability. I'm going to stack that file, stuff that file, so that it's huge and that there isn't any question that at least uh, the carrier had this information available for the review. Now, in my opinion, the federal court were cowards. They should have held Unum to their promises because Unum insisted that they use Gen X and Unum easily could have had access to that material. So I think that, unfortunately, the court allowed Unum to get away with robbery. If your claim has been denied, call me today at 727-894-3188. I can help you with your disability claim regardless of where you live in the United States.